Hi, Facebook friends and YouTube. Okay, I'm going to continue reading the words of Jesus. Um, I'm picking up in Matthew 10, and this is Matthew 10, 16. Behold, I send you out. Oh, okay, so the context of this, this is Jesus sending out his 12 disciples to do ministry. Behold, I send you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. Therefore, be as wise as serpents. And harmless as doves. That's my favorite verse. Be as wise as serpents, but as harmless as doves. It's important to be wise, but we need to be innocent, of course. But beware of men, for they will deliver you up to councils and scourge you in their synagogues. You will be brought before governors and kings for my sake as a testimony to them and to the Gentiles. But when they deliver you up, do not worry about how or what you should speak, for it will be given to you in that hour what you should speak. Which is how I feel a lot of times when I write stuff on Facebook that I think that God is like directly giving me what I should say for the most part. Um, for it will be given to you in that hour what you should speak. For it is not you who speak, but the spirit of your father who speaks through you. Amen. Now brother will deliver up brother to death and a father his child and children will rise up against parents and cause them to be put to death. And you will be hated by all for my name's sake, but he who endures to the end will be saved. Amen. That's why it's important to have perseverance. That's why I don't like the once saved, always saved thing, because it is important and it is up to us that we endure to the end. And some people don't. Some people start out well, and it's just like the parable of the seeds, and the weeds come up and choke out any... Um, any part of faith that they had, but they it's because they let it. So God won't leave us, but we can leave God. That's how it works. When they persecute you in this city, flee to another. For assuredly, I say to you, you will not have gone through the cities of Israel before the Son of Man comes. <clears throat> and that is interesting. I'm not sure what that verse means. It's kind of an enigma, but because God, Jesus still hasn't come back. A disciple is not above his teacher, nor a servant above his master. It is enough for a disciple that he be like his teacher and a servant like his master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub or Satan, how much more will they call those of his household? Therefore do not fear them, for there is nothing covered that will not be revealed and hidden that will not be made known. Whatever I tell you in the dark, speak in the light, and what you hear in the ear, preach on the housetops. And God does speak to us in our ear because Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. So some people think that that's like overly supernatural or Gnostic or something to hear God speaking to you. But I hear God speaking to me all the time, like 24-7. And I think, you know, if you want to hear God, you will. You just have to listen. So that's important. Do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul, but rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a copper coin, and not one of them falls to the ground apart from your father's will? But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Do not fear, therefore, you are of more value than many sparrows. Amen. Therefore, whoever confesses me before men, him I will also confess before my father who is in heaven. Which I think that's why it's important to have uh, bumper stickers on your car, you know, just things that say Jesus is Lord. Um cross bumper stickers, things that, you know, that show that we're Christian because of this verse. If whoever confesses me before men, him I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, him I also will deny before my Father who is in heaven. Do not think that I came to bring peace on the earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. Dun, dun, dun. For I have come to set a man against his father a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and a man's enemies will be those of his own household. That's why um, our family really is more the church than it is our biological family. And we need to feel like the people that love God are our brothers and sisters and our father and mother. If your brother and sister and father and mother don't love God. And if they do, that's great. He who loves father or more, mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he who does not take his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. He who finds his life will lose it, and he who loses his life for my sake will find it. That's good. 
He who receives you receives me, and he who receives me receives him who sent me, God the Father. He who receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. And he who receives a righteous man in the name of a righteous man sh shall receive a righteous man's reward. And whoever gives one of these little ones only a cup of water in the name of a disciple, assuredly I say to you, he shall by no means lose his reward. So if you give a little kid a cup of water, God will bless you. And then John's disciples came and asked Jesus some questions. They said, like, are you, are you the one who is the Christ? And he said, go and tell John the things which you hear and see, the blind see and the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed and the deaf hear, the dead are raised up and the poor have the gospel preached to them. And blessed is he who is not offended because of me. And so why would people be offended because of Jesus? Well, he was very bold and outspoken, and he was definitely attacking a lot the religious leaders of that day, the Pharisees, um, because they cared more about themselves than they cared about God. And Jesus could see that. He could see that their their hearts, that their hearts were evil, that they wanted to control the people rather than having God control the people. And then Jesus... Um, said to the people about John, what did you go out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken by the wind? But what did you go out to see? A man clothed in soft garments? Indeed, those who wear soft clothing are in king's houses. But what did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I say to you, and more than a prophet, for this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send out my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way before you. Assuredly, I say to you, among those born of women, there has not risen one greater than John the Baptist, but he who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. It's interesting. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John, and if you are willing to receive it, he is Elijah who is to come. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Meaning, if you understand this, then you, then that's great. <laughs> So the violent take it by force, like we need to be aggressive, we need to be like a lion for Jesus, which is my latest catchphrase, kind of, be a lion for Jesus. I used to always say shine for Jesus, but now I say be a lion, be, be a lion for Jesus. You know, you don't want to be timid, you don't want to be scared. God did not give us, give us a spirit of timidity, but of love, power, and a sound mind. But to what shall I like in this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplace and calling to their companions, and saying, we, we played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We mourned to you, and you did not lament. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say he has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, look, a glutton and a wine-bibber, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. But wisdom is justified by her children. And then, and then Jesus gives woes to some cities. He rebukes some cities. Woe to you, Chorazin! Woe to you, Bethsaida! For if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. But I say to you, it will be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon in the day of judgment than for you. And you, Capernaum, who are exalted to heaven, will be brought down to Hades. For if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. But I say to you that it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom in the day of judgment than for you. And then um, this is about rest. He said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and prudent and have revealed them to babies or to maybe like to not so intelligent people. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in your sight. All things have been delivered to me by my father and no one knows the son except the father, nor does anyone know the father except the son and the one to whom the son wills to reveal him. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lonely in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Amen. May God bless you all. Um, Jesus loves you. God, I pray for anyone watching this. I pray that they will be inspired also to make some YouTube videos about reading their favorite chapters in the Bible. And I pray that you will lay something on their heart for them to do because we all like to have meaning and purpose in our lives. 
And YouTube is like where everybody spends 24 hours a day right now because a lot of people just watch cat videos. But God, I pray that we as a church will pour out uh, wonderful, awesome videos that people can watch so they won't just watch cat videos on YouTube. <laughs> and I pray that um, you will give other people words of wisdom to share in YouTube videos and help us all to grow your church into a much stronger, stronger force, God, so people will notice the church more than they notice porn or more than they notice fast food or shopping or things that they want to buy, God. I pray that people will see your church more than they see anything else. And I pray that anyone watching this will really, that you will stir up a passion in their heart and in their soul <clears throat> to make videos and to write things and to get your word out there in any way that we can and to use modern technology and help us to be wise about where people are now. That I think mostly people are on Facebook and YouTube. So help us to fill YouTube and Facebook with your word, with your words of wisdom and help us to serve you always because we owe you so much for what you did for us, God. If we really think about it, we owe you so much. So help us to really see that. And I'll conclude with a song, my favorite song. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. I think God is saying to me, well done, good and faithful servant. So I will conclude with that. <laughs> and I hope you all will make some videos. Worship, make a video of worship, make a video of praying, make a video of Bible reading. Or make a video of like a sermon if you want to just ad lib a sermon. So God loves you all, men and women. If you're a woman, you can do it too. You don't need to be silent. And, you know, you could just think you're making a video for other women, which is perfectly permissible in the Bible that women are supposed to teach women. And if we are just supposed to teach women, it's hard to say exactly. Anyways, God loves you all. God has something for you to do that nobody else can do. Amen. God bless.